Roseanne. And I'm Joel. And I'm Jason. Today we'd like to tell you about the strange way in which convolutional neural networks fail. To illustrate the problem, let's consider a toy task. Say you have a set of images where each has one pixel on. And for each image, we know the ij coordinates of that pixel. Imagine we'd like to train a neural network to paint the image from the coordinates. What type of network would you use? Well, a convolutional network, of course. We could use the same approach taken by thousands of papers and paint the image with a stack of deconvolutional layers. We assume ComNets would trivially solve this task, but they turn out to perform surprisingly poorly. In more detail, we randomly place each pixel into either the train or test set using an 80-20 split. Because only one pixel is highlighted in each image, we pose this problem as multi-class classification and use a softmax output layer. We try lots of networks with different hyperparameters. For each network, we plot the train accuracy versus test accuracy. This diagonal line indicates equal train test performance. We found some networks that do poorly. And as networks get better, they unfortunately all start to overfit. Eventually, some of the largest models do achieve perfect train accuracy, but somehow none exceed 86% test accuracy. We had thought convolutional networks would work perfectly for this task, but somehow they don't. Why not? If only we had a neural netatron 3000 to tell us why. Wow. Let's look at the predictions from one of the best networks. So we asked the network to paint this. To see what's going on, let's zoom into the little region around the target pixel. Here we have the target pixel highlighted in red, and we show both the model's softmax prediction as well as the, the logits. This pixel is in the training set, so as expected, the model gets it right, although some probability leaks outside of the target pixel. The next pixel over is in the test set, and the model is just barely right, with a neighboring pixel capturing almost as much probability. Go one more pixel to the right, and now the model is completely wrong. This is surprising because Thanks to the 80-20 split, almost all test pixels are surrounded by training pixels. So why is this so hard for a network? Is it because expanding information from a small space to a larger one is difficult? Would it be easier in the other direction? What if we train a convolutional network to collapse image information into scalar coordinates, more akin to ordinary image classification? It turns out this works just as poorly. The dots on the left show the correct pixel coordinates, the dots on the right show the model's predictions, Glossing over some details, the model does poorly on the test set and struggles visibly to predict the training set. So the direction doesn't matter. This seemingly simple coordinate transform task causes problems with convolution in both directions, from Cartesian ij space to one hot pixel space and the other way around. This is kind of crazy. Even when we train using supervised learning, even when only one pixel is being painted, and even when training examples are all around, convolution still fails to learn smooth functions between Cartesian space and pixel space. Unfortunate. It turns out there's a simple fix. Convolution is equivariant, which implies that as each filter is applied to the input to generate the output, it doesn't know where it is. We can assist convolution by letting filters know where they are. We do this by adding two new channels to the input, one with i coordinates and one with j coordinates. We call the resulting layer portconf. Guys, guys, bad news. Uh, the reviewers are saying that we broke convolution. It's no longer translation equivariant. Uh, we forgot to cite some paper from 1989. And reviewer three said, this isn't a new kind of GAN clear reject. I think a GAN wrote that review. OK, there's a lot of great things about convolution. It has few parameters, it's fast to compute, and it's equivariant. CordConf keeps the first two of these properties, and the third is optionally learned or discarded as needed. If convoids from the coordinates learn to be zero, it behaves like standard convolution. On the other hand, if translation dependence is useful for the downstream task, it's capable of learning that too. Uh, CordConf is related to a range of other ideas like locally connected layers and CPPNs. Uh, check out the paper for more discussion. So first, let's see how this solves the coordinate transform problem. When we used convolution to paint pixels, we noticed artifacts and overfitting. With CordConf, performance is perfect on both the training and the test set. The story is the same in the reverse direction as well. Whereas convolution has trouble regressing coordinates, CordConf models them well. Thank you, Dr. Joel. At this point, we've used a toy problem to show a failing of convolution, and we propose a fix. It was only a toy problem, so naturally we wonder to what extent this core issue has persisted insidiously inside other tasks, hampering performance from within. So we tried adding core comp layers in networks trained on a variety of tasks. First, object detection. This seems like a natural fit because object detection models look at pixel space and output bounding boxes in Cartesian space. 
On a simple problem of detecting MNIST digits scattered on a canvas, we found the IOU produced by a faster RCNN model improved by about 20% when using QuartConf. Second, we can think about image classification. Here we don't expect QuartConf to help that much, as classification is more about what's in the image than where it is. We added a QuartConf to a ResNet 50 trained on ImageNet, and we found it helped only the tiniest amount. Next, let's think about generative models for images, like GANs and VAEs. In these models, pixels are painted from high-level latents, which supposedly encode concepts like position. Intuitively, QuartCom would seem useful. Take a simple task of generating colored shapes. First, an ordinary GAN. A video of interpolating between latents looks okay at first, but when we slow down, we notice that not everything moves. The visual artifacts are tied to the canvas, and actually, some bits of objects are simply appearing and disappearing. Now, just for you, Reviewer 3, we put chord comp into both the generator and discriminator. The motion is smoother. When we slow the video, we see objects remain coherent and move smoothly instead of teleporting. We see a similar story with VAEs. With convolution, we see things fading in and out, but with chord comp, objects move around more smoothly. Painting Elson bedroom scenes with larger GANs, with convolution, we again see frozen objects fading in and out. With chord comp, we instead see smooth geometric transformations, including translation and deformation. Back to you, doctors, Rosanna Jason. Another domain where Korncov might help is in reinforcement learning. We trained some agents to play Atari games like Ms. Pac-Man, thinking, for example, that if we could get a con filter to simultaneously recognize Ms. Pac-Man and extract her location from the maze, it could be useful for learning policies. We tried Apex, a DQN variant, but Korncov didn't immediately help. We also tried A2C, a popular policy gradient method, and Korncov helped more often than not. This might reflect a difference between learning explicit policies and learning Q functions. Out of nine games we tried, in six, ChordComp trained faster or had better final scores in standard convolution. And as expected, we noticed a boost in Ms. Pac-Man scores. In two games, ChordComp performed similarly, and in one, it did slightly worse. Overall, these results suggest ChordComp could be useful in RL. In summary, a ChordComp layer is a drop-in replacement for convolution that seems to help in a wide variety of domains. We're curious to hear if you found it useful in your networks and tasks, so let us know what you find. We'd like to say thanks to our co-authors, Piero, Felipe, Alex, and Eric. And thanks for listening. Hi, I'm Roseanne. And I'm Joel. And I'm Jason. That was too slow. Wait, that was... Take seven. <laughs> and I'm Jason. Today, we'd like to tell you a strange way... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Artifacts and overfitting. With ChordConf, performance on the training and test set was perfect. ChordConf! <laughs> Artifacts and overfitting. ChordConf models... <laughs> <laughs> but somehow none of the models achieve, exceed... <laughs> so the direction doesn't matter. This is seemingly simple. <laughs> When we used convolution to paint pixels, we noticed artifacts and overfitting. Chord conf models... Okay.